Hi guys, me again, the Human Reviews Guy. Today I will bring you a short first impressions video of this guy, the Aureus Swoosh Renaissance Fitter. Uh, now, first off, full disclosure, because I think that's important, I got the sword for review purposes and I did get it for free. So keep that, that in mind. Uh, in any case, I always encourage you, whichever sword I review, try to not base your decision solely on my review, try uh, looking at other reviews as well, and ideally, if you can, get the sword itself, try it out to see if you like it or not. Uh, so, that being said, let's get on with the review. First, let me hit you with some stats. So, this is a short fitter, actually. It's 127 centimeters, 97 centimeter blade, 8.5 centimeter point of balance, and the vibrational nodes are very good, so one third and heel of the hand, as well as the rotational node is also great, which is at the point. Uh, so let's talk about how it handles. First off, uh, how is it in the stabs? Now, it has a very nice wide root point, um, which is also rounded. And it is relatively stiff, so this requires quite a bit of um, strength, uh, but it is still acceptably stiff. It's not too stiff for me to be afraid to stab someone in a tournament setting. So this is about what I actually like uh, as stiffness in my swords. Uh, it weighs about 1350 grams, which is quite light, but because, as you can see, it has a very wide blade, uh, a relatively narrow shield though, so this allows it to have a very good blade distribution, and I'm sure that the very wide fuller is what contributes to the price of 350 euros for the one with the straight guard, <coughs> excuse me, and this one with the uh, curved guard is 370 euros. Um, now, I know what you're thinking, like a Eugenie standard is, what, 180 euros? And that is true, but that is because it is much simpler to make, because it is um, flat, basically, and it is heavily tapered towards the point. So uh, you get basically a relatively light, uh, very maneuverable fitter, but you also get trade-offs, such as uh, not being able to feel where the sword is because it has no weight towards the front of the blade. Uh, a white fuller avoids that, as well as letting the fitter have much thicker edges um, all over the blade, which allows it um, to be more long-lived. Um, that being said, this feather is also a very pretty feather as far as I'm concerned. And both handling-wise, because it has a good blade presence despite its low weight and it feels good in the bind, uh, I would say actually a comparison with the Albion Mayer is in place. Um, it is not as highly finished as the Albion Mayer, uh, because a good finish also costs a lot of money, but it feels similar in the way it handles. Only I actually like this one better because it has a wide point, which the Albion doesn't have, um, and it just it, it suits my style a little bit more. Let's let's say. Uh, so if you like the Albion Mayer and you're looking for something that is similar to it but more available, definitely take a look at these guys. Um, or actually this guy. <clears throat> um, so, the sword feels good in the stab, it feels good in the strikes, uh, you can definitely feel where the point goes, and it feels good in the bind. Uh, so basically, the only downside that it has is, is also its advantage, which is, it is a shorter fitter. It's 127 centimeters, which is short for some people and just right for a lot of others who are looking for a shorter fitter now. So if you are more into Fiore or uh, you want to do uh, lift an hour with the shorter fitters, definitely take a look at these guys. So what else can I tell you about the sword? Um, I really like the blade. The, the blade is awesome. The crosshair is also nice. Um, this one is curved, but both the curved and the straight ones have a little uh, globe at the end, well not a globe really as much as a, a disc that helps keep it safe in Ringen am Schwert. Uh, now with Ringen am Schwert I also have to say that because it's uh, very thick in edges here, if you get hit with this it will kind of hurt. Uh, then again it's a relatively light blade so it kind of takes the edge off. This is rounded so this part isn't actually sharp. Um, it's, I believe if you get hit with it, uh, like in Ringen am Schwert, 
um, it would be slightly painful, but then again, because the shield is actually so narrow, uh, it won't be too bad, because you will very quickly also hit this part of the blade as well. So this is actually, uh, it, even though I didn't like it at first, it's, it's a very smartly designed shape. Um, I won't talk about the handle because this is a pre-production model and uh, the guy said, the owner said that he would change the handle a little bit, so I'm not talking about the handle. Now the pommel also, like the crossguard, as far as I can gather, has two variations. This one is the uglier one, but the more utilitarian one. So it's the faceted pommel. Uh, and I really like faceted pommels because they let me feel the sword a little bit more because I know uh, not only with my right hand but also my left hand uh, just exactly how it is turned and it's easier to grip and so on. However, I have to concede that the scent stopper pommel looks a lot better on both the Renaissance and the regular version of this fitted. Uh, now, the only thing that kind of bugs me with this sword and uh, I do really believe that this is a pre-production issue is that um, this has the pommel has a very slight give. So uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but yeah, you probably can. So it turns a little bit. Now, I'm not uh, entirely sure why it is. Um, the construction method is a screw and then a pin. So you have both methods. So the blade goes fully through. It's not spot welded or anything. The blade is actually full tank but um, it also has a spiral. Uh, they put the, 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 the pommel on and heat the pin and then hammer it down. Uh, and I have actually uh, contacted the owner and told him, look, this happened, you might want to look into it. And um, there is a solution on the way. So I am quite certain that in production models, this will not happen, but I thought it fair to inform you that uh, this was one of the pre-production problems. Otherwise, the guy who designed the sword also designed my favorite sword, uh, which was made by a sadly shitty company called Comfort Fencing, the Dobringer, and it really shows. Uh, it shows that this is a well thought out sword that was designed with a specific purpose in mind, and it handles very, very, very well. Um, again, don't just take my word for it. Uh, of course, um, do weigh in my opinion as well, if you are deciding for this, but try to find other um, reviews online, other impressions, and primarily, if you can, go to events, find somebody who has a sword like this, and ask them to lend you it for a bow to two to see how you like it. So I had the sword, actually, I got it on the Himatelier event, uh, and I lent it to a bunch of people, and everybody who tried it out liked it a lot, and if they did not like it, it was because it was too short for them. Uh, which again is the main advantage and disadvantage of this sword. Um, so hopefully this is a company that will come out with a glowing reputation because this seems to be a really good sword. Uh, it is at the upper end of the market, for faders especially. However, then again, it also does kind of compete with the Albion Mayer uh, as far as the feeling of it goes. Um, not in the finish, I will concede that, but as far as the feel and the size of it goes, and the overall aesthetics as well actually, it does compete with the Albion Mayer at a lower price, uh, and that's, that is actually because it doesn't look quite as good as the Albion Mayer does. So I hope this was informative for you. If you have experience with this sword, or if you own one, or will own one shortly, please leave a comment down in the description. Uh, let's people know what your experience are with this sword and otherwise thank you for listening i hope this was informative for you and have a good one